the second step you have to take when you do a meta-analysis is that you have to search bibliographical databases. And what I will do are in this part of the course, I will show you how you can select bibliographical databases and how you can search in these bibliographical databases. So first, how do you select the bibliographical databases for your meta-analysis? Well, the most important bibliographical databases for intervention research, uh, psychotherapy, but also uh, all biomedical interventions are PubMed, PsychInfo, and the Cochrane Central Register of Control Trials. PubMed is on the, it's the largest biomedical database in the world. And personally, I think it's also the best uh, uh, database with all kinds of uh, interesting features and very well developed. Specific for the psychological fields, we have PsychInfo. And so you have to search also in PsychInfo. Then we have the Cochrane Central Register of, of Control Trials. What the Cochrane Collaboration does is they also search in PubMed and all kinds of databases to identify randomized trials in general. Uh, but what they also do is do, for example, hand searching. And they are experts, they, uh, all kinds of experts in specific fields participate in the Cochrane collaboration. So they all, they all know who are the important researcher. And so they use all kinds of other methods to identify randomized trials for inclusion in their database. So if you do a meta-analysis, you always have to search these three databases. Uh, you can find the, the, the web uh, pages for this uh, where, you, where you can uh, find uh, these in the Cochrane Handbook. So you, I won't give all the web pages uh, for this. But you have to remember that there are all kinds of other bibliographical databases. And depending on your research question, you can consider to include one or more of these databases. For example, you have all kinds of national and regional databases. For example, for Latin America, you have LILACs. In China, you have the Chinese biomedical literature databases. And, so, and then you have all these subject-specific databases. For example, on pharmaceutical research, you have international pharmaceutical abstracts. You have specific uh, databases for health promotion, global health, nursing, etc., etc. Uh, so, um, and then there are other databases you can use. For example, you can use citation indices. For example, the easy web of knowledge. You can, if you're interested in identifying all trials. You can, for example, look at one trial you want to include and then see which studies have cited that trial to see if, if there are new trials examining the same subject. Uh, the same you can use also Scopus and also Google Scholar for that purpose. If you, it's also important to, to think about whether you want to include dissertations and theses, and you have s specific databases, for example, ProQuest in the United States, or you have specific uh, websites for the United Kingdom and Germany to identify dissertations and theses. One problem of meta-analysis, which I briefly indicated earlier, is that we often do not know whether there are studies that are, that are done but are not published. One of the ways to solve that is to search in gray literature. So, for example, reports of research institutes, which have been published as a report but not as a paper. And you won't find these through PubMed or one of the databases. And there are specific databases uh, to find gray literature. I'd like to show this one. I did, once did a meta-analysis based on this Chinese uh, uh, database uh, together with, with Chinese colleagues. And I, I think it's nice to show that you, if you do systematic searches in databases, you never get all the hits there are. There is always more research uh, that you have not been able to search. And I think this is a very good example. We, we, by the way, we found more randomized trials in China on uh, uh, psychological treatments for 
uh, depression in older adults than in the rest of the world together. So if you, if you just search PubMed and PsycInfo on the Cochrane database, you would think that you have identified all trials, but that's not true. In China, there are several more, and you just don't know about it because they're not published in English. There are all kinds of other things you can do to identify studies for inclusion in your meta-analysis. For example, you can hand search uh, the tables of contents, or you, and that sounds a bit like, like a lot of work, but usually you know which journals are the most important ones for your meta-analysis. And it's, uh, you can go through the tables of contents quite quickly and quite easily. That's, uh, it sounds mo like more work than, uh, than, than it really is. What you also can do is first identify other reviews and, and, and meta-analysis. And for example, you, there is a specific database of reviews and meta-analysis, the DARE database, where they try to get, collect all the reviews and systematic uh, and, and meta-analysis in all, all biomedical research. And so you can, you can first try to identify systematic reviews and see which studies they included in their review. You can also look, for example, in treatment guidelines. And there is a specific website where you, where you can find all kinds of treatment guidelines. Another thing is that you can look uh, for ongoing studies, uh, for example, in trial registers, or many of the protocols of randomized trials are published nowadays. And you can search for those and contact the authors whether they already have the data of their trial. So you could include that in your trial, in your meta-analysis. The final thing is that you can just send email emails to experts in a field and ask them whether they know of other trials which are not included uh, yet by your earlier searches. So you have uh, defined which databases you want to search in and now you have to go to the real searches. So how do you do that? Uh, usually, it's, um, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's not very straightforward. It does sound very straightforward, and it's, it should be straightforward, but usually it's not that, that straightforward as you would like it to be. So what you, what you do is you define your search strategy, you make a plan, uh, you take your PICO acronym, you define the search term uh, according to the uh, PICO acronym, and you make a search string, for example, for PubMed and one for uh, uh, PsycInfo and one for the Cochrane databases. What you usually do is you make your search strings, try what happens if you do that in PubMed. And if it's good, then you continue with it. But often you have uh, only a very, very small sample of hits in that, data, in that database, of you, or you have uh, 20,000 hits. So you, if you would follow that, you would read all those 20,000 uh, abstracts, and that's usually not feasible, or you don't have the time for that. So what you then do is you adapt your search strategy so that you're certain that you, f that you identify all the studies but you do not want to search all PubMed, for example. There are millions of uh, um, uh, abstracts in that, and yeah, if you want to be absolutely certain that you, that you don't miss any trial, you should read all PubMed, of course, but that's not feasible. So what you, what you always have to do, there is always a trade-off be, between identifying the right studies, not missing them, and uh, doing all the work in, uh, so to be certain that you haven't missed anything and, or to have a more narrow search in which you have less work to read all those abstracts, but you may miss some, some studies. There's always a trade-off. And it's not possible to give a good uh, estimate of, it depends on the time and the, the importance of missing one or two uh, or maybe more studies. Um, there is no 
golden rule for that, but it's very normal that if you do a larger meta-analysis that you have several thousands of abstracts you want to read. And uh, for example, we just did a meta-analysis on the association between depression and excess mortality in prospective studies, and we searched for about 15,000 uh, abstracts, which is a lot, but it's not that bad if you really do it. So if you develop a search strategy, you have to translate your PICO to search strings. You have to remember that you, use, that you have to use both text words and keywords, and I will show that later, how that works in PubMed. Text words are just the words used in the title and the abstract. Mesh terms or keywords are the keywords attached to that, to that specific abstract. So they, they may not be the same as the words in that abstract. So what PubMed and all the, all, all the other bibliographical databases do, they label an abstracts with specific keywords. They're called, in PubMed, they're called uh, MESH words, which stands for medical subject heading. And so if you do searches, you have to remember that you have to search with both text words and keywords or MESH terms. A very useful thing what you can do is to see, to look at papers from which you know that they will be included in your meta-analysis and see which keywords, which uh, mesh terms or keywords are attached to them. You can use those to uh, identify the right mesh terms. Each of the bibliographical databases has a, what in PubMed they call it a mesh tree, or in, in Embase they call it M tree. And that's, that's a comprehensive system of keywords. And you, um, uh, you have to understand the structure of that to identify uh, the right keywords. If you have a good library at a research institute or your university, it's very useful to help a librarian to help you with these searches. Because librarians or specialists in that area they know the databases, they know how to do the searches, and it's very useful to help, to ask for their help, instead of doing this all by yourself. An important issue in doing searches is working with Boolean operators, and it's just logic. You can use uh, and, or, and not. So and you use to, if you want to identify um, abstracts that have, that have both uh, uh, key concepts. Uh, so you, for example, if you look for uh, psychotherapy on depression in randomized trials, then you have to include depression and psychotherapy and randomized trial. Use is, uh, or is used for synonyms. For example, if you search for studies on generalized anxiety disorder, you can identify abstracts by using words like generalized anxiety or worrying. They should include one of them, and then they will, uh, uh, you will include them in your search. You can also use not, so that you, that's a way of excluding studies. For example, if you want to identify studies on psychotherapy for depression, but you don't, do not want all the trials on pharmacotherapy, you say that you, you do your search for psychotherapy and add not pharmacotherapy or not antidepressant. These are very simple uh, uh, examples, so these are not true search strings, uh, that, uh, but this, these are just for illustrative purposes. There are other, all kinds of other uh, tricks you can use, for example, truncation, uh, the um, star, I don't know the English word, I don't know the English word for this. Asterisks, Asterisks thank you. Uh, so for example, if you say random and you put the asterisks after that, uh, that identifies not only random, but also randomized, randomized, randomly, et cetera, et cetera. Anything with random at the beginning and uh, anything after that. You can also use wildcards. For example, if you say uh, M, 
question mark and that that will identify men 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 etc etc proximity op operators are also useful so if you have for example depression adjunct 3 disorder that returns articles with depression and disorder uh, within one three words of each other another useful thing is to use search filters there's a website where you can find all kinds of search search filters and these search filters are de specifically developed to help you do searches in bio bibliographical databases for example there is a search filter for randomized trials in PubMed. Uh, you can see that here. So it's, uh, it's, you, can, you can say to PubMed that you exclusively want to uh, identify randomized trials, and then PubMed has an algorithm, a search string, to identify randomized trials. But there are also all kinds of other uh, search strings for economic studies, for uh, treatment guidelines, for uh, prospective studies for um, uh, any 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 many type of studies have uh, this type of sp uh, specific search string that often have been validated in all kinds of studies. So, for example, this is the highly sensitive search strategy developed by the Cochrane collaboration, um, and it's the what they call the sensitivity maximizing version. So the chance that you miss randomized trials when you use this search strategy is very low. You probably will identify all randomized trials in this field. The disadvantage is that you will have to read a lot of abstracts because they were, it also identifies a lot of not randomized trials or not the randomized trials you're interested in. So I want to show you a bit how it, this works in PubMed. Uh, especially the MeSH database, because it's so key to developing search strategies. This is the opening page of PubMed, and if you uh, look at the right of the screen, you see their MeSH database. And if you click on that, uh, you get into a new screen where you can fill in uh, your um, uh, a t a term, and I filled in here depression, and I, I, I searched for keywords, MASH terms on depression, and I saw that there are, well, as you can see here, there are 13 results, 13 MASH terms related to depression. And if you click on one of them, oh, sorry, yes, if you click on, uh, for example, one of them, major depressive disorder, you go into this screen. And when you look at the bottom of this sheet, you see this, this is the mesh tree. So, um, um, uh, and this is the place where this mesh term is in the mesh tree of PubMed. And you see that uh, you, you have all these mesh categories, psychiatry and psychology is one subcategory of all these categories, mental disorders is one subcategory, mood disorders is one subcategory, etc., etc. Until in the end, you get to major depressive disorder. And this is the full uh, mesh tree of mental disorders. And you, as you can see, it has all kinds of different uh, categories uh, included. So if you then search PubMed for depression, you, see you have 285,430 uh, hits, which is a lot. You cannot, uh, I won't advise you to read all them. Uh, but one of the interesting things in PubMed, if you, if you look at the right side of the screen and you scroll down, you see how PubMed translate, translates that term depression into a more specific uh, search strategy. And that's very useful because it can also help you think of how your search string looks like. And here you see how uh, PubMed automatically does that. So, for example, um, if you are looking for the effects of cognitive behavioral therapy for major depression in adults compared to waiting list controls, uh, you can search for major depression, major depressive disorder as a MASH term, 
or depressive disorder as a MESH term, you combine it with cognitive and uh, therapy or treatments or intervention, and you use the search filter of PubMed to identify only randomized trials. This is not a true search string, but it's just to give you an idea of how these uh, search strings look like. In this search string, you only explicitly include studies in which patients have a major depressive disorder. So you, ex you do not uh, focus specifically on, for example, studies in which uh, participants can score above a cutoff on a self-rating depression scale. So if you do that, uh, I did that uh, in July, if you do that, you have, you have about 1,500 hits, as you can see. You can just make that search string, put it in PubMed, and run this. And by that time, there were 1,544 hits. So what you want to do, if you do these, this, such a search, you want to save it, because you have to work with it further. And you, uh, you want to import it in bibliographical software. I will come back to that later. But if you have done your search, you have to save your search. You have to somehow get those abstracts out of PubMed into a file you can use for your further meta-analysis. So what you do is if you, uh, I just give the example of PubMed, each database has its own method for this, but if you want to use this in PubMed, you click on Send On, you get a new screen, and you can say, for example, you want to have it sent to you by email. You fill in your email address um, and you send it to yourself. And you, go, you will get these hits uh, to, uh, to your email address. Uh, and you can, so you can do all kinds, you can read it, for example, in your email or use it in other ways. Much better way to save it is to use it as a, to, to save it as a file. The, again, you, you click on send on and then you uh, indicate that you want to save it as a file. You indicate in the, as format that you want to save it as Medline format, and then if you click on that, you, can, uh, you will save it as a file. That file you can uh, 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 enter into Reference Manager or EndNote or any bibliographical software, you will do your, the next step of your searches. So the key point of this part of, the, uh, of this course is that if you do a meta-analysis, uh, if you search in bibliographical databases, you have to search at least in PubMed, PsycInfo, and the Cochrane databases. But also think about other databases and other methods you can use to identify the right trials. And you have to think that, that there is always that balance between sensitivity and precision in your search strategy. Do you want to be absolutely certain that you don't miss trials? You have to do a lot of work. If that's less important, you can, you can make a more, uh, uh, you, you will have to spend less time, but the chance of missing one trial will be larger. If you can, you should ask the help of a librarian. And if you do the searches, think of the use of Boolean operators, truncation, wildcards, and proximity operators.